Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. May your kingdom come, Lord, and may your perfect will be done, Lord. Lord, we long for your kingdom. We have been studying about the restoration. We've been studying about end time events. And we ask that you may help us to be faithful as we continue to study and to live in these last days. I ask that you may please continue to bless your people, not only here on the line, but all over the world at this time. We long for the gathering, Lord, where we all can be gathered together as one family at last. Please continue to work upon our hearts, Father, because we do not want to miss out. We want to see Jesus. This is our desire, the one who died for us. And so, Father, as we open your word this morning, have your own sweet way. And I ask for a special blessing, a special anointing from your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Okay, so our topic this morning is Wonder Woman, the final conflict. It may sound like a very strange topic, but I assure you it's, it's biblical. It is biblical. Now, the, the vast majority of people are drawn to the things that are supernatural. We love to look at the things that amazes us. And the great deceiver knows this. And so in the, in the last days especially, he will work signs and lying wonders. But if you and I know anything about the supernatural working of the Holy Spirit in the heart, we will not be ensnared by the devices of the wicked one. We will not be taken by his miracles and schemes. And so, Virgin, you know, we're not drawn to the movie theater to watch the things that are fictional. We are drawn to the word of God, to behold the things that are true and the things that are real. And so the Bible says now in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, it says here, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Now we will not be studying all of Revelation chapter 12 this morning. We have, we have, we have studied that many times. We will focus more in verse one and verse 17. And so this woman, this wonder woman, notice the Bible says there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, a wonder, a woman, wonder woman. That is God's church. That is the church that he is building in these last days. Now, this woman existed way before there was ever a fictional superhero that the world calls wonder woman. And so we're not borrowing anything from the world here now. This woman is biblical. She is original. She is God's church. Wonder woman. Now, this person says here, last day events, page 20. He says, everything in the world is in an unsettled state. Everything in the world. And, you know, inspiration wrote this years ago. And how much more is it today? In her time, it was so, but how much more today? You know, you, the, the, the world is panicking right now. Uh, there's the financial crisis. There, there are uncertainties, fears that, that's taken hold of men. You know, uh, the, the housing market is, is, is in trouble. And the, the, the big fear that the world is grappling right now, grappling with right now, has a lot to do, brethren, with money. 
This person says, the time is coming when we cannot sell at any price. Last day events, page 148, the time is coming. And then it says, in the last great conflict, in the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off. We are very familiar with these statements. But brethren, it is coming. The last great conflict is coming and God's church must deal, must deal with it. Again, his person says, Satan says, for fear of wanting food and clothing, they, that is the people of God, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. It says the earth will be wholly under my dominion. That is what the enemy is saying. Now, keep in mind again that the final crisis has to do in a great deal, brethren, with money, the problem of buying and selling. And that crisis, you know, there's, there's a financial crisis upon the world right now. And you know how difficult they are making it right now to purchase a home, to buy a vehicle, et cetera. And for us to be totally dependent, brethren, on the worldly system. So what the enemy is seeking, as we see here in Prophets and Kings, page 183, is seeking dominion world dominion and one of satan's goal right now is total control of the money supply here's a an image it says there's a there's a dollar bill and it says i am a piece of paper and i control your entire life <laughs> that's a true statement for so many I mean, just think about it. I am a piece of paper and I control your entire life. Brethren, is that true for you? Is it true for me? Now, keep in mind that we are actually in the midst of a banking crisis that is spreading all over the world. Remember, the enemy is seeking control, full control of the money supply. We know that they're bringing things over into a digital system where, where everyone will be under control. When we have cash, we have freedom, but they're cutting that off, friends. They're cutting that off. And the love of money, all these things must be rooted out of us, especially as God's children. Virgin, the pace is picking up concerning last day events. And more than ever, we should be setting our affections on the things above. Here's a statement here. It says, Swedbank's um, strategist says, US banking crisis is spreading, warns of more banks failing in vicious spiral. Now you, you remember the banking crisis just a few days ago. It, it has not ended. This thing is spreading because they're seeking to, to destroy an old system and bring in a new one. It says after Silicon Valley Bank, Sil Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, First Republic Bank, and now potentially PacWest Bank, Western Alliance Bank, and First Horizon Bank, all having been subject to financial meltdowns, the proverbial cat, will be very difficult to put back in the bag. In other words, they're saying things are going to increase. Things are going to get worse. And men's hearts are failing them, brethren, because of the things that are coming upon the earth. Now, this guy here, Jamie Dimon, is a longtime JP Morgan Chase CEO. And he says that the banking crisis is not over and will cause repercussions for years to come. Now, Virgin, the reason that we're looking at these things here because they have to do with prophetic events. In the last great crisis, money will be a big issue, a very big issue. Now, this guy here, Zoltan uh, Pazar, he says, we are witnessing the birth of a new world, monetary order. This, this, this fellow here is a, is a very big guy. Notice it's, it says Wall Street stunned by Zoltan Pizar's latest prediction of what comes next. 
if he is able to say something and stun Wall Street, you know that he's a big fellow. He says, we are witnessing the birth of Bretton Woods III, a new world order centered around commodity currencies in the East that will weaken the euro dollar system. He says, after this war is over, he says, money will never be the same again. Now, he, he said this just last year, March last year, before the banking crisis. He made this statement. And he had Wall Street um, just shaking their heads. So he says, money will never be the same again. Money, the, the, the war, friends, is against cash. There's a new system, a digital system that will be used to control the people of the world. So what is all of this leading to? What is all of this leading to? Last day events, page 140, 148 says, says hoarded wealth will soon be worthless. When the decree shall go forth that none shall buy or sell except they have the mark of the beast, says very much means will be of no avail. So God calls for us now to do all in our power to send forth the warning to the world. So what a statement. It says hoarded wealth will soon be worthless. And that's dealing with the people of the world, people in the church, because they're trying to bring everyone on, a, on the same platform here. And I can't go into much details in it, but they're seeking to bring everyone on the same platform with this digital system. So inspiration is saying here, very much means will be of no avail soon. And that's in the time of the mark of the beast. But before that time, before the Sunday law, friends, we will be feeling this thing very hard. The time is here. The time is here, brethren. Now, you know, the, the faithful few that's in God's church today, the time is coming when they will be completely out of the, the system of the world. Right? We believe that. We know that. The time is coming when we'll be completely out of the system of the world. What a time is coming upon us. How will we handle it? How are we handling things now? The world will eventually cut off God's faithful children because they will not comply to the new system that, are, that they are putting in place right now, which will eventually be tied into the Sunday law. Now, look at this statement by Yahoo Finance. Now, remember, we're looking at certain things that has to do with last day events, and we're going to see how God, with his church, is going to deal with the things that are happening, how God is, is building his church to sound for the last message of warning to the world. But hear this statement. It says the digital currency... Monetary Authority, which is DCMA, launches an international, Virgin, notice now, an international central bank digital currency. That's April 10th, 2023. Virgin, this is the highest level. This is, this is an international central bank digital currency. So they are putting everything being in place and we're under pressure right now we if, if if we you know inspiration warned us long time ago to make certain moves right put certain things in order um as far as growing our own food and having um a piece of land and so on and because the time is coming when buying and selling will be a very serious one. We are actually in that time. We, are actually, we have been in that time. It's a serious one right now. Now, this international central bank digital currency, this is where they can have what you call cross-border payments with all the central banks in different countries working together. The devil wants control over every human alive and money 
is a means to achieving that. So don't take for granted what is now taking place with the banks, et cetera. It is a sign that the end is near. You know, the, the, the banking system is really a fraternity all over the world. It's a fraternity. They all work together. And so that's why inspiration says the final movements will be rapid ones. They know exactly what they're doing. Last day events, page 150, inspiration says, we shall find that we must let loose of all hands except the hand of Jesus Christ. Our Lord. All hands, brethren, except the hands of Jesus Christ. He says, friends will prove treacherous and will betray us. Relatives deceived by the enemy will think they do God's service in opposing us and putting forth the utmost efforts to bring us into hard places, hoping we will deny our faith. All earthly support one day will be cut off. You know, but that's nothing for us to worry about. Because if we're loyal to God, we will know that God will take care of us. It is only those who are engrossed in the things of the world that actually worry, worry about that statement when it says all earthly support will be cut off. Let them cut it off. God is able to provide. Amen, brethren? As uh, Sister Deidre made uh, share the text in Sabbath school when the children of, Israel, children of Israel said, you know, is God able to provide a table in the wilderness? <laughs> Is he able? Yes, friends, he is able. Last day events, page 151 says, the only way in which men will be able to stand firm in the conflict is to be rooted and grounded in Christ. They must receive the truth as it is in Jesus. Brethren, every truth that we study, Christ must be the center of it all. Call upon Jesus as you study the prophecies. Everything that is taking place now is showing us that we are in prophetic times. Heavenly Places, page 162 says, those who claim to have advanced light must reveal the influence of that light in their words, their deportment, their voice, their actions at all times and in all places. Brethren, at all times and in all places, this can only be done as we are rooted and grounded in Christ. Stay in his word, stay in prayer, friends. Again, this person says, Satan has a thousand mask batteries which will be open upon the loyal commandment keeping people of God, to compel them to violate conscience. Can you imagine that? The enemy has a thousand masks. In other words, um, he's doing certain things undercover in a deceptive way. A thousand mask batteries. But I remember reading also that that the Lord has a thousand ways to deliver. Say amen. Now, another event that has great prophetic implication is this, brethren, the upcoming 2024 election. Now, stay with me here now. We're not diving into politics. We're looking at how the future for this country and the world is shaping up on a prophetic level. It says here, a recent poll that Trump on the Republican side has about 55% um, support. And the DeSantis 21, we're just gonna look at those two real quick. Trump 55%, DeSantis 21. Those polls can change at any time. We should, by now, as present truth believers, know the times we are living in and move accordingly and, and move in earnest. So I believe the 2024 election has great prophetic implications. 
Now, the guys with the money, the big money, those who are pushing for the 2030 agenda, a new world order, et cetera, they are totally against Trump. I want us to understand that. They are totally against him. Is leading the poll, I said, can change at any time. It is the Santos that they favor on the Republican side. Now, unless Trump can be bought by these people, they will fight against his reelection. Virgin, that was why he was not reelected for a second term. Now, we believe that this coming election again has major implications concerning prophetic events. Now, hear what the Catholic Herod, Herod, Herald has to say about the Santis. And they said this, they, 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 they said this, they send this newsletter out November 10th, 2022. The Catholic Herald. Hear what they says about the Santis. He says two big takeaways, and they, and they were talking about the midterm elections. Hear what they say. It says two big takeaways emerge from the US midterm. The first was that the Democratic, the Democrats were not um, ob obliterated by a Repub Republican red wave. All right. It says the second was the effective crowning of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis as the unofficial new leader of the GOP and its likely candidate for the 2024 presidential election. Continuing, they say, DeSantis, who has been governor since 2019, is like Joe, President Joe Biden, a Catholic. He would likely be a very different kind of Catholic leader if he emerges as the next president of the United States. So they're saying, you know, this guy is a Catholic. He's, he talks a lot about Christianity, but he's a Catholic. And they're saying that, and they're pushing for him, you know? And he has been doing a lot to appeal to the conservatives. But brethren, there is something about this man. There is, there is something about this man, something very mysterious. And you know, you know, I'll not say any more on that, but God is right now calling us, calling upon us to watch and pray. And we do not have a whole lot of time. We need to understand the events that are taking place. Pray accordingly, work for our neighbors, work for our brothers and our sisters in the church accordingly, because the time is so short. Another. Something else that is taking place in the world today. We have this, this child abuse and trafficking taking place in this world, brethren. The, the modern day slavery of children. This is a big, big, enormous, brethren. This is a terrible situation that is taking place right now with children. The money that they, that they, they having this thing, brethren, it's hard to shut it down. You cannot shut this thing down. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. You, you, you have heard what, what happened at the border. How many children has been taken away and, and many of them have been trafficked, being abused. Modern day slavery taking place in the world today. What is the answer, brethren? I believe God has an answer for these things. In Isaiah chapter 49, verse 25, it says, But thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prayer of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. <clears throat> now, many parents look at Isaiah chapter 49 here, verse 25. And they, they claim this, you know, for their children. And that's the right thing to do. But when you read this in context, 
It is really talking about the deliverance of the great multitude. That's what this is really speaking about, the deliverance of the great multitude. But we can also apply this to what is taking place right now with child trafficking. It's a big thing going on in the world today. And people, many people in high places with a lot of money in responsible places, they are involved in this. And many of these children are being destroyed. God has an answer and his answer is the church. He's building his church to deal with the situation that's in the world today. Notice what it says about in Joel chapter two, verse nine, talking about uh, 144,000 God's wonder woman, the last day church. It says, they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Yes, brethren, there are thousands of children in the hands of molesters being abused, and there's hardly any help for them. But I do not believe that God is just going to leave them to perish in the hands of these wicked people. It says here that the church, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief and take away those two-year-olds. Take away those three-year-olds, those four-year-olds, those five-year-olds that are being abused and shall take them into the kingdom. Because I remember reading in Psalms 127, I believe it says, children are in heritage of the Lord. Children are in heritage of the Lord. They, they had no say in coming in, into this world. They had no say. Whether they were they, they came into this world from a marriage relationship or, or no, they had no say. And God still loved them. But there's a terrible abuse taking place in the world now, friends. And there's so much going on. We need to pray about these things and ask God to, to help us to, to really live the truth. That he may be able to use us in this last work. And so, brethren, there is an enormous amount of pain and suffering that is coming upon the world. Inspiration says that soon there will be sorrow in the world that no human balm can heal. God has a plan to deliver his people. And we're going to look at that plan. God has a solution, and his solution is a woman. That woman in Revelation chapter 12, wonder woman. And behold, a wonder in heaven, a woman. Now you remember, you know, you know, and that woman must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You remember how the devil used a woman to take down the human race in the Garden of Eden. And God is going to use a woman to crush his head. So four things quickly. Who is this woman? Who is she and why is she a wonder? We're gonna look at her supernatural powers, why the dragon makes war with her. And lastly, I want to encourage us to prepare for the final conflict. It says, clad in the armor of Christ's righteousness, the church is to enter upon our final conflict. Fair as the moon, clear as the sun and terrible as an army with banners. She used to go forth in all the world, conquering and to conquer. This woman, brethren, is hardly seen today. She's in the shadows. She's, she's hidden out of view. She's in the wilderness. But God is training a faithful few to stand in the last days. So this woman is God's ever-living church. He had a church from the beginning of time, the church without the Bible. Then you have the Jewish church. Then you have the apostolic church. And today the church in the wilderness, this is where we are, praying for the kingdom of God to be restored. 
And then we'll have the church triumphant. This is the church that God will use in the last days to deal with the crimes, to deal with the problems of the world, a spirit-filled church. And I pray that we will be a part of it. So inspiration says in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2, I have likened the daughter of Zion unto a comely and delicate woman. Delicate also means weakness. For when I am weak, then am I strong? She's also calmly. Calmly means that she, she looks good. No, not just talking about the outward appearance now, but the inward adorning of the heart. Calmly, delicate. That is God's church. Not a people that, that fight and fuss or any of these things but a calmly, delicate woman, weak in herself, but strong in Christ. This is the wonder woman that God will use to finish up the work. God's ever living church. Now the church, brethren, is also spiritual. And the church is also supernatural. That is God's church. And you know that true Christianity, brethren, is supernatural or it is nothing at all. You know that the church came down from heaven. Christ came down from heaven with the gospel. And if you and I are to enter the true church of God, it must be by a heavenly birth. You remember what he said to Nicodemus, you must be born from above. That is a supernatural, spiritual church. And so brother, no one can enter the true church along the lines of this creation. He cannot enter by the door of nature or tradition. We must be born from above. What Paul calls a new creation. Is this your case, brethren? Is this my case? And behold, the Bible says, a wonder in heaven, a woman. This woman must be rooted and grounded in Christ. And she will be God's answer for a degenerate age. Now she is a wonder to angels. Angels marvel at the love that God has bestowed upon her. That God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son for her, virgin for you. She's a spectacle to heaven. She's a miracle of grace. Angels stand in awe, in admiration, in wonderment, fascinated by this woman. They're surprised. They're astonished. They are amazed at this woman. And why? Inspiration says here, the angels of God seraphim and cherubim, the powers commissioned to cooperate with human agencies, look on with astonishment and joy that fallen men, once children of wrath, are through the training of Christ, developing characters after the divine similitude. That is why, to be sons and daughters of God, to act an important part in the occupations and pleasures of heaven. Brethren, there are pleasures in heaven that nothing in this world can compare to. There are occupations for us to fill there. Brethren, let us get there by God's grace. She's also a wonder to devils. Devils marvel that they cannot destroy her. The gates of hell, Christ said, shall not prevail against her. This woman is a puzzle to demons, a riddle that they cannot solve. Why? Because she falls and then she rises up again. What a wonder, brethren. Or are you and I a part of this woman? This last day movement, this church that God is now building. That he will soon fill with, with Pentecostal power to go forth in this world. 
It says here, the Lord Jesus is making experiments in human hearts through the exhibition of his mercy and abundant grace. He is effecting transformations so amazing that Satan, with all his triumphant boasting, with all his confederacy of evil united against God and the laws of his government, stands viewing them as a fortress impregnable to his sophistries and delusions. They are to him an incomprehensible mystery. She is a, she is a wonder to devils. Notice it says in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, it says, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, Wonder Woman. Signs and wonders. This verse says, By thousands of voices all over the earth, the warning will be given, miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and signs and wonders will follow the believers. That's called Porther Ministry, page 151. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8 says, Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my branch, the servant. I will bring forth my servant, the branch. That's Jesus Christ. They are men, that is men and women now. Wonder that, wonder woman. And why? Because, because of Jesus Christ. It is all because of what Christ has done. And their minds, their heart are filled with love for Jesus. They know the sufferings of Christ for them. And they are given their all to serve Christ. Jesus was a servant, and their desire is to be a servant like Christ. And they will be men and women wondered at. All of this is made possible because of God's servant, Jesus Christ. John chapter 4, verse 48 now says, Then said Jesus unto him, that is the nobleman, he says, Except ye see signs and wonders, he says, ye will not believe. Brethren, there are some who need to see signs and wonders. You know, in the days of Christ, they were saying, show us a sign. Show us a sign. And, and I remember Jesus said, there shall no sign be given thee except for the sign of Jonas, the prophet, except for the sign of Jonas. So Jesus did give them signs, many signs and wonders. He wrought miracles among them. And virgin, so today in this generation, God has given the world signs and wonders, and that is his ever-living church. Or are you and I a part of it? The faithful few, the faithful few friends. They are like signs and wonders wherever they go. Or are you a sign and a wonder to those whom you come in contact with? Brethren, remember, it is not of us. It is all of Christ. And it is all of grace. Jesus formed within. Second, let us look at her supernatural power. Her supernatural power. This person says, Acts of the Apostles 478, in his efforts to reach God's ideal for him, the Christian is to despair of nothing. Amen? Take that to heart, dear friends. The Christian is to despair of nothing. He says moral and spiritual perfection through the grace and power of Christ is promised to who? Brethren, to all of us. Jesus is the source of power. So we're looking at her supernatural powers now, this, this wonder woman. He says, Jesus is the source of power, the fountain of life. He brings us to his word. And from the tree of life presents to us the leaves for the healing of sin-sick souls. 
He leads us to the throne of God and puts into our mouth a prayer through which we are brought into close contact with himself. In our behalf, it set, he sets in operation the all-powerful agencies of heaven. At every step we touch is living power. I say, amen. Amen. He brings us to his word, dear friends. He, put, he puts a prayer in our mouth he, to bring us into close contact with himself. Christ is the source of our power. Isn't this a wonderful statement? Virgin O for power. The power to live a godly life, the power to love, the power to hate evil, the power to do good, all for power. Again, this person says that God fixes no limit to the advancement of those who desire to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. Brethren, God fixes no limit. Brethren, we can advance. We can grow continually more and more and more and more. God fixes no limit. We put the limit on ourselves and we put a limit on God, but he, he fixes no limit. It says through prayer, through watchfulness, through growth in knowledge and understanding, they are to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. We're looking at her supernatural powers, prayer, watchfulness, knowledge of Jesus Christ. We are to be strengthened. Amen. Again, it says human weakness shall find supernatural strength and help. In every stern conflict to do the deeds of omnipotence and perseverance in faith and perfect trust in God will ensure success. The church will triumph. God's faithful few will triumph and do the deeds of omnipotence. Wow. Perfect trust in God, virgin, is what we need. And we need to persevere also, especially now. It says in Desire of Ages, page 324, it says, when the soul surrenders itself to Christ, virgin, it says, a new power takes possession of the new heart. We're looking at the, 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 the power that God has given to his church. Notice this verse, it says, it is a supernatural work, bringing a supernatural element into human nature. Virgin, our topic is Wonder Woman, God's church from the beginning of time all the way down to the end. She is a supernatural being because Christ is dwelling within. The spirit of God is leading her. The faithful few. Amazing grace, Virgin. Oh, what amazing grace. Desire of Ages continues, says, the soul that is yielded to Christ becomes his own fortress, which he holds in a revolted world. And he intends that no authority shall be known in it but his own. He says, a soul thus kept in possession by the heavenly agencies is impregnable to the assaults of Satan. Virgin, you know when uh, they bring out these fictional superheroes, they have certain um, shields or something, you know, to, 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 to stop the assaults of their enemy. And God has given us a shield. What we need to do is surrender. And allow the Lord to keep us. We will become impregnable to the assaults of Satan. And we're getting somewhere now. Stay with, stay with me. Notice it says here, um, called Porter 
Evangelism, page 55. He says, the Christian, while he is ever ready to give the soft answer that turneth away wrath, must possess the courage of a what, brethren? A hero to resist evil. Our topic is Wonder Woman. We must possess the courage of a hero. Nothing less, brethren, nothing less, nothing less. And we want to know what a hero is all about. Testimony to the Church, Volume 5, page 187 says, Men whose faith is weak and wavering are not the ones to carry forward the work at this important crisis. We need the courage of heroes and the faith of martyrs. Our oh, friends, you know, when I look at myself, I have to pray to God and ask him for help. Courage of heroes. Faith of martyrs. I mean, I don't want to die. But for Christ's sake, for Christ's sake, I want to go through, brethren, for Christ's sake, because he died for me, he died for you. And when we continue to study the cross, when we, con when we continue to study the love of Jesus, it will encourage us with the courage of a hero, because the greatest of all heroes is none other than Jesus Christ. And he will give us of his spirit, brethren. He will give us of his spirit. What the world needs right now, brethren, is Wonder Woman to take the field. Brethren, are you willing? Do you not see your high calling? Let us follow close. To Jesus. Let us follow close to Jesus because without Him, we can do nothing, and we are nothing without Christ. What is a hero? A hero is a person who is admired for courage, for outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. That is a hero. What makes a person a hero? A hero is selfless, a genuinely good person, someone willing to risk their own life to save another. That is a hero. I remember the Bible says, they shall seek death and shall not find it. God is making up now his church, 144,000 heroes that will stand in the last hours, selfless. What are the three universal characters of a hero? Now this is taken from mythology, you hear what they say. The three universal characteristics of a hero, he says they are often noble, number one, they are linked to the gods, number two, and it says when a hero is born, there's almost always danger right away. That's mythology. But there's, there's, there's the ring of truth in it. Because if we surrender ourselves to Christ, we, come, we become by his grace noble. We have noble characters. And we are linked to God. And not the gods, but to God. I remember the scripture says we are his offspring. And I remember Christ says, the Bible says in Hebrews that he is not ashamed to call us brethren. We are linked to Christ. I remember Jesus says in John chapter 15, abide in me and I in you. And let my words abide in you. We are linked to Jesus Christ if we surrender to him, if we know of his love. You know, and when the 144,000 or seal. When, when the sealing process is, is, is finished right away, there will be danger because the enemy will attack. A hero is someone who fights for a cause. That is a hero. A person distinguished by exceptional courage and nobility and strength, a fighter, a champion. Regent, this is the time. This day and age demands something of the supernatural. We cannot stand before the anger of the nations with feeble faith. 
we must understand the cause. Brother. It is God's cause. It is God's business. It is the business of saving souls. We must have a cause that we're fighting for. We can't stand before the nations with our tail between our legs now. Look at what the, the, look at what the world is doing right now, friends. Look at the strides that they are making. Look at the assaults on the family. And so-called professed Christians are cowing down and bowing down and being beaten down left, right, and center by infidels and their agendas. You know this is true. Many of our brethren are silent, afraid to speak out the truth, being, being, being cowed down by the LGBTQ community and so on. Brethren, who is on the Lord's side? God is looking for someone to champion his cause. And so remember now, her strength, her supernatural strength is prayer, faith, the word of God, courage. That's her supernatural strength. Now, why the dragon makes war with her? Why the dragon makes war with this woman? Let's read about it in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. That the enemy will make war. Now, you know that uh, a nation makes war or can only make, make war with another nation. A nation makes war with another when they feel threatened by that nation. And so when God has a certain number of believers in the church totally consumed with love for Jesus, then the purification will take place. God will literally weed out the chaff, brethren, and the devil will see the threat and finally make war with the church. As soon as the separation is finished and Satan has lost out with his deceptive schemes, the church finds herself in a great conflict with the enemy and the war against the woman is the blue law. He will make war. But there are things happening right now before this blue law. There are certain straits that we will be in before this blue law. Let us read it in Revelation 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The natu national son of law is that war. Keep in mind that the woman did not make war with the dragon. It, it was not the woman that made war with the dragon. The dragon is angry. And it is the dragon that makes war with the woman, not the woman. Why? Because they keep the commandments of God as a people. Now, let us understand a little, something about war. You know, if I have a personal fight with someone, that is, not, that is not a war. It is a fight. It is a scuffle. It's not a war. A war is always a nation against another nation. And this war of the dragon is the forces of hell, demons aligned with wicked men against the body of Christ, against the church. That is war. That is when um, the church collectively is cleansed and fully united to Christ when the sealing is over. That is the church collectively, as a body. Not against one person here, one person there, but the church as a body, friends. That is the war. In Job chapter four, first John chapter four, verse 17, he says, as he is, so are we in this world. Regin, the, the, the dragon attacked is always against the condition of righteousness. 
This is a tie. Always against the condition of righteousness, holiness, purity. That is a time. The church, by God's grace, must get to the place of sinlessness. We must all be a part of the makeup of this woman in this time, this end time. Brethren, now is the day. This person says, those who receive the seal of the living God and are protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus fully. Again, this, is, this can only be after the purification. After God has judged his church and all that will remain in the church are those who have the seal. No un unconverted among them, no rebel in our midst. A people perfectly united to Jesus, ready to face the dragon and his assaults in the time of trouble. Now remember, it says that this woman was crowned with 12 stars. Revelation chapter 12, she was crowned with 12 stars. Now in the Old Testament, you have the 12 patriarchs, you have the 12 tribes. In the New Testament, you have the 12 apostles. And then last, we'll have the 144,000. 12 times 12 equal 144,000. And you remember the number 12 is a symbol of government. Now, brethren, this is very important. Crowned with 12 stars. 12 is a symbol of government. God has been working to have a people upon the earth capable of governing, capable of ruling, ruling rightly, governing in holiness, in righteousness. God has been working for this. God's government, brethren, upon the earth, not in heaven now, but upon the earth. And so the 144,000 is the last church, the last group of people, the last servants that will stand. And you know that the devil's purpose right now is to keep the church in a state of weakness. And so we have to pray to God, understanding that we are weak. Oh, yes. Say, Lord, I am weak. Give me strength. Help me to walk in your strength and not in mine. First Corinthians 15 verse 25 says, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. Under his feet. How is he going to do it? How is Christ going to do it? Romans 16 verse 20 tells us, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. That's the church. Paul is speaking about the church collectively as a body. Virgin, there's only one way for the body of Christ, the church, to deal a final blow to the devil. That is when the church as a whole is perfectly united together as one, clothed in the armor of Christ's righteousness without any sin or sinners in their midst. And again, remember, and there was war in heaven, Revelation 12, verse 7. The enemy, when he saw that he must be thrown out of heaven, when he saw the threat of being thrown out, he engaged in war in heaven. He declared war, friends, in heaven. And notice what it says here, child guidance, page 471, Satan and his hosts are warring against the government of God. Now, what does this mean? Let us look at Ephesians quickly, Ephesians chapter 1, and it'll give us something, uh, an understanding of this. Ephesians 1, beginning at verse 19, it says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power? To so us word now, who believe? according to the working of his mighty power. Notice now, it says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Notice verse 21. 
far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Verse 22 and 23 says, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Virgin, the church ultimately exists for one thing only, and that is the sovereign headship of Jesus Christ. Notice it says here that God had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. But you see, the devil is seeking to usurp that. That is the problem. Because the church is his body, the fullness of him, brethren. Notice the word fullness. The fullness of him that fill it all and in all. Christ's headship over the church is what the devil is after. But the church, brethren, exists to express the headship of Jesus Christ. That's why the church exists, to express the fullness of Jesus Christ, to make known to others the headship and lordship of Christ. That's why the church exists. And this will be expressed in the 144,000 servants of God. They live not for themselves. They live to glorify Jesus. The enemy is after the Lordship of Christ. And the way that he's seeking to usurp that is to try to cause the church, his people to bow down to him, to yield to him, to yield to temptation, to commit this little sin, this, 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 this small sin. Oh, friends, what an enemy we are dealing with now. Notice the government of Christ is the one focal point of all satanic opposition. Notice we read before that the devil is warring against the government of Christ. The enemy is after the government of Christ, his lordship. So when he tempts us, when he tempts us, brethren, the end that he is after through, through everything he does is to usurp the position of Jesus. And so when the church as a body go forth in power, demonstrating and reflecting the government of Jesus on the earth, the devil will be wroth. That's why he will make war. Twelve stars. It's on the crown of this wonder woman. Lord. So now, Virgin, why must this conflict now be dealt with by the church and not angels or others? Why must this conflict be dealt with by the church, Virgin? Simply because the lordship of Jesus Christ is bound up mainly with the church. His lordship on this earth is bound up mainly with the church. You remember in John chapter 13, Jesus said, you call me Lord and master. And he says, and, and, and you say, well, for so I am. You call me Lord and master. Jesus says, I am your Lord and master. So friends, we need to, to walk as such and let Jesus alone be Lord and master in our lives. Jesus was, was ruling the earth, you know, through Adam in days of old. He was ruling the earth through Adam. And he will finally rule the earth again through the 144,000. You remember in the days of the apostles, how mighty the church was. 
the devil witnessed the mighty power of the church in the days of the apostles. And devils trembled when the church was pure. And when the church was pure, brethren, the church was strong. But now, what is going on, brethren? There's, there's weakness now. Ah, there's so much weakness now. Hear what inspiration says here. Very interesting statement. Inspiration says, the influence most to be feared by the church is not that of open opposers, infidels, and blasphemers, but of inconsistent professors of Christ. These are the ones who keep back the blessing of the God of Israel and bring weakness upon the church, a reproach that is not easily wiped away. Our friends, it's not the LGBTQ. It's not the WEF or the WHO or whatsoever. It's not infidels, none of these, it's not blasphemers. It is inconsistent professors. False brethren mixed up with the truth. Secret sinners in the church. And so in closing, in closing, I just want to encourage us to prepare for the final conflict. Because it is right upon us. Prepare, brethren, for this final conflict. You know, <clears throat> brethren, you know, the devil will not always win. The devil will not always have the upper hand. God is fitting an army of believers to scatter, scatter them on the battlefield. And so the mighty Gospel, like an atomic bomb, will one day explode in the heart of satanic forces. God will deliver a great multitude out of the clutches of the wicked one. Take courage, brethren, and prepare yourself for the battle. Prepare yourself. The reason why the WEF and the WHO and the UN and all of these forces are able to do what they're doing the reason that they have gone so far is because of a spiritless church. It is because of my weakness, brethren. The reason why these child molesters are getting bolder and more dangerous is because of my weakness. But I do believe that God is able to strengthen me. Do you believe that, friends? God is able to strengthen you. Be encouraged, brethren. Press closely to Jesus. Study like you have never studied before. Pray more and more. Pray for me. Pray for my wife. Pray for us as we pray for you. And ask God to make you a part of this wonder woman that he will use to crush out the forces of evil. Like a battle axe, he will send her forth. He will crush out the forces of evil. But let him first do it in your own soul. Yes, friends, God bless you. Let us pray.